Mike, take it away. You can start up with your questions and um, yeah, connect this project. Okay. <clears throat> um, first, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about where we're at with some of the um, the new connectors that, that are being worked on. Um, I think last time we talked about uh, protocol buffers. If, if we did not, that is certainly um, one that is is really ready for testing. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've been getting some feedback from some of our existing customers. Uh, no one on this uh, call exactly, but I understand that some vendors such as uh, Juniper and, and a few others are in fact supporting uh, protocol buffers as a really alternative to SNMP. Um, so we really are at a point where we would love to find uh, someone, you know, an existing customer preferably that would uh, like to start taking a look at this and testing it if, you know, if in fact they have devices or applications or something in their environment that support protocol buffers, um, that would be great. <clears throat> um, we have also ready for review. I, I haven't even seen it myself yet. I, I will be looking at it tomorrow, but the two additional uh, areas are um, SSH is one that is supposedly ready for, uh, you know, review and testing internally, at least. And basically, the, the basic concept there is to be able to um, define hosts that you want to SSH to to collect data where you don't have any other means, or perhaps that is maybe the best or most secure means. But in any case, being able to access essentially a command line with SSH and be able to run, you know, commands and pull back data from what is received, you know, on the screen. Like I said, I haven't, um, I haven't seen it, but it, it apparently is ready for uh, at least demo, which, which I'll be looking at tomorrow from our, you know, engineering team. The, um, the other it's actually a group of additions that I know DEX will be interested in. Uh, we, we've heard from several um, avenues that IBM, um, you know, used to have this uh, module that they called the, uh, the IT service monitors, basically testing different types of IT services, things like FTP, DHCP, DNS, um, looking for response time, availability, things of that nature. Um, that is also something that I'm going to review and take a look at um, with our, in our engineering team uh, meeting tomorrow so I can provide some additional uh, updates in our next call. But again, um, this will be something we'll be reaching out and seeing if there are any customers who would be interested in uh, also uh, testing these things. And essentially, we just took a look at, you know, what IBM was supporting and the types of metrics. Obviously, we're not going to exactly, you know, we're going to try to do better, of course. So we're going to look at at least what they're doing and provide, you know, that much capability and hopefully more. But those are those are two of the biggest or, or three of the biggest things that are you know on the very very near horizon uh, with uh, with this connector project. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I was going to bring up, um, we've had I don't know how many of these customer console meetings now, like maybe what three I think or something. Um, one of the things we've not really done is um, kind of, I mean, we have some people that join in one time and then maybe not the next, but I'll, I'll just kind of go right ahead and uh, reach out here and see if um, 
would anyone customer wise uh, on the call like to maybe talk a little bit about what it is that they are doing with nerve center maybe some something that you know might be unique something interesting maybe it's something you've been doing for years maybe it's something you're looking at doing that you haven't you know really done yet but just sort of talk a little bit about your particular implementation and, and see if we can get some dialogue going between uh, some of the different uh, representatives here to um, you know help us get some feedback for one but also maybe spark some ideas um, with some of the others in uh, you know different directions that they might want to go for um, maybe adding some some value to the nerve center instances that they already have um, is, is anybody <clears throat> I mean I know it's kind of putting you on the spot and <clears throat> maybe you're not prepared at the moment but you know it'd be great if someone wants to kind of speak up and you know just give us a quick overview of how they're using it what they like what they don't like um, and let us maybe have an idea of uh, you know help us get some feedback um, you know that that sort of thing any uh, any volunteers any takers uh, it doesn't have to be elaborate you know you don't have to show pictures just a brief discussion see if uh, see if it sparks any any additional dialogue No takers, huh? Hey, Mike. Well, this is Mark. Oh, Marcus. Yep. I think I think you're already very familiar with my environment. I don't I don't think you have anything to add other than taking advantage of the 64-bit features in the upcoming in the uh, upcoming version of Nerve Center. Um, we're pretty standard with all the interface polling we do, and. Um, Scalability would be my, you know, which is, it's, we're already there. It's just like I said, taking advantage of the 64-bit Perl is. And by the way, we did get approved for the 32 gigabit of memory on the server, so FYI. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that doesn't add much, but just, I mean, doesn't add much to the conversation, but. Um, yeah. Well, I think in, in your case, Marcus, the, the, you know, yeah, I, I would say that some of the monitoring you're doing is maybe a little, you know, uh, you know, probably what many of the others are doing as well. But I think you're doing some, um, you know, leveraging Nerve Center's ability to um, include sort of referential information because, especially with the new service that you're getting ready to roll out, we're, we're able to pull data sort of attribute type data directly from your um, CMDB asset management, whatever you call it, and be able to leverage the the uh, node attributes feature, which is relatively new, and be able to leverage that for setting up how each device is, is going to be managed based on service levels and, you know, types of service, that sort of thing. And I know you're doing some of that in your, you know, in your other services as well. And that may be, you know, not tremendously exciting, but, you know, it, some of those things are not that easy to do with, with other products and with, with Nerve Center and this new uh, node attributes feature. I, I think um, it, it's probably one of the, one of the most valuable features we've added to the product in the last, uh, you know, quite a few years. Well, I know with, with the with the Ethernet over copper solution that we just worked with you on, we know we can assign an individual <clears throat> individual attributes to a device. We can treat the interface as an individual node. But I'd be curious, how do you do that with with a node that has thousands of interfaces? How would you leverage that? Well, there's, I mean, there's no limits on the number of attributes that you can put out there. And essentially, in your case, what we're doing is creating 
actual managed entities um, out of the, the different interfaces. Because in your case, an interface equals a customer uh, and or slash service. So we're actually leveraging, you know, uh, it, it really, if you ultimately you're going to end up having perhaps, you know, many thousands of, of customers and being able to create, you know, the actual managed entity, whereas we're not, you know, we're not referencing the, the routers themselves as nodes. We're just looking at each interface and giving it a very unique naming convention based on a number of factors, you know, in the, you know, coming from the database. So it's just a matter of adding numbers, you know, however many uh, nodes and, or, you know, as interfaces and uh, just keep going. If you run out of gas on one server, you know, you can add more. Right. So there's no way to, to, to do that same thing using the loopback address of an, a device? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if, if, you're, if you have a node and you're referencing the loopback as its management IP, then yes, you, you can certainly add, you know, attributes for the whole node as well. I mean, you really have to think about uh, even thinking about, you know, we call it the node list. I mean, that's a throwback to nerve center for years. And the reality is more and more what we're seeing is customers are not even, you know, the node list isn't necessarily nodes. The node list can be um, just what I call managed entities. It, it could be, uh, you know, something that is defining a service. It could be something uh, you know, really, we, we've even heard some use cases that are quite interesting, really, where a node or rather a managed entity could be a person. You know, it, it could be a, a user ID. There's really no limit to what a node could be, especially now that we have the ability to, to plug in attributes. So it's, it's really a mindset type of thing to take a step back and say, really, you know, nerve center has been used as a SNMP polling, you know, fault and network monitoring product for so long that, that the reality is it's, it's just data we're moving through there. And it doesn't even have to be SMP anymore. So as long as we have this concept of a, of a referential name, you know, a managed entity name, we have an address which, you know, is predominantly an IP address. Um, we have sub object and then we have attributes. You could also call them your, your node, your um, sub object, your var binds. It's really just a data format. And that's how we are internally thinking of moving data through the product anymore, not as SMP information, but just simply data. And that's, I think that's really the future of nerve center is, is, you know, perhaps it is time to start even changing some of the naming conventions to get, you know, to get everybody thinking in that mm -hmm. uh, direction. That makes sense. <clears throat> I mean, in, in your case, I think that the, that new service that we've put together is, is, is very unique actually in the way that we've created very specific entities for things that are not really individual nodes. They're, they each have an IP address, but they really are a specific interface on some router somewhere. And, you know, theoretically that, that same router could be using other interfaces for totally different services. I mean, I don't know if that's the case now, but it could very well be. And we're able to pull out just the very specific ones that, you know, that are a part of this new service and then assign essentially SLA attributes to them and then be able to alter monitoring kind of on the fly based on the, the SLA attributes. Yeah, that makes sense what you said. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was starting to think about it, and we had this conversation previously is that yeah, for the solution for the Ethernet over copper, yeah, but I was trying to figure out how to 
incorporate that into the TDM world with S and P polling. Right. And I was getting caught up on the well. Each each node has thousands of interfaces. You know, we're totally we're approaching a million interfaces. Right. Total that we have to monitor. So yeah, <clears throat> I'm sure I'll be picking your brain again. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Anybody else have anything they want to bring up or talk about? I mean, I would I would say if if you're not ready to talk about it this time, think about it. You know, maybe I mean you could put a slide together or or not. And, and for the next meeting, it'd be great if we could, you know, just hear about some of the different unique types of things um, that might be going on. Uh, you know, in fact, next time I think if I don't. Unless we get, if we don't get a volunteer, I think I can think of a few customers that have yet to join our our console meetings, um, but some things that we've worked with on, you know, with them. Uh, and particularly, I'm thinking about the the wireless uh, environment, uh, wireless controllers and access points. Some things we've done with some customers. Um, I know routing, monitoring. Uh, you know, routing and routing uh, parameters is is pretty high on the list for for many. Um, yeah, so let's. Uh, if anyone could come up with something for the next meeting, I think for the next meeting I will also walk through a model or a set of models we did for a Cisco wireless controllers and access point type of an environment. So. Um, I don't know if there's nothing else we can turn it over to Greg to walk us through where we're at with the the new web um, you know the web interface last call anybody Greg oh, heck yes. yes yes heck well, if you want to jump in with questions at any point go right ahead um, I'm not upset. So uh, what we're looking at here, you are seeing my screen. Is that right, Ranga? Yeah. Yes. OK. I just wanted to check, make sure it was working, because I'm seeing my screen. All right. Uh, we're, we're on the cusp of releasing this, that this is the web interface. It, uh, you've, for those who have been attending here, you've seen this two times before. Um, the, what we're doing is we're, we will be rolling this out over a series of releases across the next year, or incrementally this will come to replace the desktop applications that everyone has loved and enjoyed since the mid-90s. Uh, we're starting here with a node list. Uh, Mike spoke a little bit about how we're moving away from being so SNMP oriented. And you can see that a little bit here in this screen already where, for instance, we are calling things like the managed inventory. At the moment, the managed inventory is, yes, the node list. Uh, but uh, it, you know, we're, our, our thinking is already heading in the area of uh, you know, this idea of what is log matrix doing correlation of events and polling doesn't have to be solely contained to the world of devices with IP addresses. At the moment, that's where the product is you know, seen, that's what it does, but our thinking and our orientation and direction is going to take us a little farther afield than that. So. Um, uh, that's that's what we're up to with this. Here, what we're looking at on the screen right now is uh, part of the you know the, the interface. This is the we in this first release of it. What we chose to do was address the idea of allowing you access to the node list, to be able to see the contents, um, and manipulate them in their configuration. In the releases coming up across this year, we're going to be adding the abilities of what's in the administrator program or NC admin. We'll be adding more strength here to the node list, and then we'll fill out the assets category over here, which is all your the library of materials that you type in to your nurse center provide or or import, which is you know up the ability to do poll functions and trap masks and alarm model construction and forwardings. So um, that piece will be coming along a little bit. So we've filled out this interface here with more than what's available at the moment, so you get a feel for it. Uh, this is, uh, there are some things here that are just buttons that don't do anything just yet. But in this initial release, you are able to access fully the node list and uh, populate it. 
um, and see what's happening. It is, runs in sync with the desktop client. You can use them back and forth. You can use multiple instances of each or just go solely with this. Uh, uh, they're, they all interact in with the same NERF Center server. It's all uh, updating the same you know, data repository in the back. Um, and this is very much, because we're just dealing with the node list, which is like a spreadsheet kind of um, you know, item, you know, row entries, which are nodes out there. Um, yeah, so it, this does look like the old application in a bit. Um, for those who have seen this, this is about the same as before. Uh, I can, we have separated the idea of a host name. Uh, um, I can say, you know, the, for, you know, for nodes, we've, we've always had the ability to name them. We've separated out the host name from that, so you can refer to it under one approach here and say, okay, I want to look up, and it's going to look up based upon the host name. It fully does IPv6, IPv4 addressing, so you can add those into your node. The property group mechanism is much the same as before. All nodes always go into property group. Property group. And, um, and with this, you've added it into the system here. Um, so for nodes, you can, you can look at them. There are these tabs here. You can switch between the tabs on what you want to view with a node. Part of what Mike mentioned was the uh, ability to add in attributes, which is a great feature of the product. And it's brought forth here in, you know, it, as, as well. So you can add your own random attributes to anything. Um, so I can say that this is, what, what is this website? I can say this is a website for a company. You know, I can make up on, on the fly my own attributes and this is part of the permanent data store. So for any node out there, if I'm looking at a router, I can record here information beyond what Nerf Center by default records. So I can record, you know, the vendor, the model number, the serial number, the MAC addresses if I want, uh, which interfaces I care about. And uh, further, for those who are uh, familiar with our Perl usage, you can see all this from the Perl context. You can, once this is saved, you can read that from within Nerf Center in a trap mask or externally from Nerf Center via the Perl API. And in there, there's controls so you can add and augment this as well. So as your Perl run, and interacts with the system, you can be manipulating these attributes as well. So it's a pretty robust system. The one of the, at this point we are finishing this up. We're working out some of the the, the issues with the inst installation mechanism uh, so that you can receive it. Uh, we're we're working on the help system. Here's the help that comes with it. Uh, we've uh, devised a new mechanism here. The older Documentation for Nerve Center is something we're going to be updating this year. It has been traditionally based upon, this is what it looks like here, this is our website for documentation, but the older documentation for Nerve Center has been uh, built years ago on a mechanism that we're getting away from, which is a frame maker based approach. Um, this newer one here, this is a, this is actually a product called Flare for Madcap Software. and um, on, this help will be activated by the uh, by the help buttons inside the uh, the the, uh, the new web interface. So we we have that, and that's being tied into this as well. So that's where we're at with this um, release. And as I said, across the course of this year, we're going to be strengthening that with subsequent iterative releases where we're adding more to this. Also coming this year is the what's in what state as a term that Mike Schmidt came up with a little bit ago, where we're going to allow programmatic crawling and manipulation of the alarm summary. For those who have, are users of the client application, in there, there's an alarm summary window where you can see what alarm instances are out of ground, what state they're in. You can, uh, uh, you can even that will then get into the history of what is uh, then progressed progress through for each uh, out of ground instance. So we are rolling out uh, a, a, an API extension wherein you can programmatically peruse uh, the, uh, what is out of ground and you can approach that by finding out what um, alarm instances are currently out of ground for a node or you can come at it from the point of view I have in a particular alarm model what instances exist for that and the what you know for which nodes are they applying to 
And as well, you can, the third approach is you can, from a severity-based approach, you, you know that you have a, you know, a set of severities, critical or um, high traffic. From, from that point of view, you can, again, ask which, what alarm instances exist that are in that severity level. So there's going to be different ways that you can pr programmatically crawl in and then through the alarm summary uh, window, in a sense, uh, which will allow you to script, you know, the, the mechanism of being able to spot and, um, and, and even manipulate the, um, what is happening with the out-of-ground out alarms. Uh, this will give you the ability to tie in uh, feedback loops in a sense. So if you are using Nerve Center as a front end to um, a different product in your NOC, then you're aware that an event has been cleared. Uh, you could this will provide a, a means, that there are other means, but there, this provides a means yet where you could, via a script, call back in to you know, eliminate alarm instance, send it back to ground, because you externally know that, it's, that the issue that it's tracking has been resolved, and so you can cancel it out. So that's what's coming up from development. If anyone has any questions here about the web interface, I'm happy to answer them. Um, or we can return back if anybody else has thought of any more issues uh, or thoughts that, as Mike suggested, we can discuss those as well. So you're saying from the web interface we'll have all the same abilities we have today from the client? That's right. That is the plan over the next year. At the moment, uh, this demonstration here, which is the node list, is what you're initially going to be able to get to. The other pieces are not available as yet. We had to start implementing somewhere, so we, we chose to start with the node list. But uh, coming next is the uh, ability to get into the configuration as per what you see in the administrator program. And after that, we will then proceed into allowing similar access as what you're seeing here for um, uh, you know, looking at and manipulating trap masks, the poles, the alarms, and yes, we eventually get to the ability where the alarm diagrams will appear here, and you'll be able to do the same operations towards building and maintaining alarm models as you do right now on the client. Mm -hmm. So the intention is to be able to fully replace the functionality that's in the desktop applications here through the web interface. Is there going to be, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that it will be, will there be an ability from this web interface to, if I have a note list, if I want to export it out to a spreadsheet or something like that? Or? Yes, exactly right. We want to have the ability that you can um, um, both program, we're providing a means where you both can programmatically produce a spreadsheet mm -hmm. we're in a, as a sample, and through this interface there will be a way that you can uh, select nodes and export them and have it be the exact same format and thus and and then on the the complementary side then is that you'll be able to import through here you know uh, upload a spreadsheet of node definitions so in the end you're able to manually then here Im import and export from a spreadsheet and then we're complementing that yet again with the ability to um, have provide you with a, a, you know, some usages of the API, the Perl API that's underneath here, to again crawl the node list and export it to the exact same formatted spreadsheet, or be able to take that spreadsheet and programmatically uh, upload that up into another Nerve Center server. Mm, okay. There's even a, a fifth part here to that whole cycle where, uh, again, through use of the Perl API, we can take any once, one server's node list and copy it over to a second Nerve Center server. Um, what's nice with some of these with the Perl API is that we're, we're providing you the, um, the, you know, the, the actual scripts that do it. Um, they'll just be part of the product. And you can take those, copy those, and manipulate them, and you'll be able to s you see what it's doing. But in many cases, we have customers who receive uh, input for what they need in the node list, but it comes in a format that is entirely the result of where the data is coming from. And uh, that can be from other departments, it can be from other services. And so there's many cases where you receive a spreadsheet or some descriptive uh, you know, document that explains, in a, probably in a regular format, what is the set of devices that you're looking to have managed. And then you can 
take, you know, we're happy to help with this, you can take that document and then by augmenting or re re rewriting a, you know, copy of one of these Perl scripts, then you can, you know, uh, you know, decompose that document or whether it contains one node's definition or a whole set and use that to populate a nerve center server. And the whole technique will be right there in the, as part of the Perl script. It's um, so you can see what to do. Sounds good. Right, getting data in and out of nerve center is key, and we want to make it so that it's we're not not just sharing the data from one nerve center server to another, but so that your other services are able to, you know, load and retrieve, you know, information from a nerve center server. And so that's why the Perl API has been brought into existence to allow you know, to be able to peruse the node list, um, uh, you know, augment the node list, uh, capture the node list, pull it out, and once you've pulled it out, then you can put it in any form you want. You can write it into a, a spreadsheet or, you know, send it through to, an, you know, any other service that you want. And then our further extension here that we called the what's in what state is the alarm summary ability. So it's, 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 it's expanding through time. And uh, uh, some of this is customer driven. And uh, that's that's fantastic, and we're we know that we're bending the product in the way that is valuable. Greg, um, question about the Perl API: What are the formats that it supports for for importing nodes? Well, that um, at the moment, I mean, the Perl API is a a means wherein you know you create the API contains a definition of a node and you programmatically state, okay, I want to create a new node and then you can populate the fields. So the input format is, can be anything that you uh, have available. I mean, your, you would take a Perl script that, you know, exemplifies this. We have several samples and uh, it, it, you could tear apart a spreadsheet row by row, uh, you know, from within Perl and do that, or you can be receiving the data via some other mechanism, perhaps you have something that's listening to, uh, you know, a service that occasionally, uh, you know, in, indicates some amount of data about another node and you want to capture that. And you, so you can receive that uh, in, and, you know, use, you use the API to populate the definition of a node and then you save that. And then there's actually a call called save within the API and that pushes it up into the node list and immediately it's part of the node set inside the nerve center server. So there's no restriction on the input format. It's it's uh, by default. You know, by default, the examples we have show how to read it from a spreadsheet. But once you've seen that sample, you can take that and rewrite that because the, the, our particular spreadsheet formatting or scheme, or however you want to refer to the layout of a row within a spreadsheet, um, is just an example of what you could do. Got it. Thank you. Right. So like, if you're reading an LDAP registry full of data about a node, it's only going to come to you in a different manner. But by freely providing this definition of the, um, of the API, you can, you know, with what's available through like an LDAP service or walking a DNS registry, you can, um, uh, you know, bend that and form the same nodes and populate the, the node list within the server. I mean, if we if we take this even a step further, theoretically, I mean, especially with some of these new connectors, if we're talking to things like an MQ um, bus type of communication layer, um, for instance, you could have a, a very automated setup where uh, perhaps your uh, CRM or asset management system uh, a new node could be deployed, and as it's entered into the database, a message is sent to Nerve Center via, you know, MQ, and Nerve Center receives that, and based on the message says, ah, okay, this is a new node that needs to be managed, and just enter it into the list on the fly, because it, the API doesn't have to work uh, externally either. It's something that can be used even within Perl subs or poles or, or trap masks. So, um, you know, the boundaries are almost none. So wherever data can come from within or even outside of Nerve Center, uh, if it contains the pieces we need to create a node, 
i.e. a name and, and an address of some sort, then, then we can use it. So, so then, Mike, the, the Perl API, does it have a, an exists method where you can check to see if the node is already configured in your center? Yes. Excellent. That's right, it does that. Now, we had started with the Perl programming language because that is what is already part of Nerve Center. However, behind the scenes, what the Perl API is doing is we're switching this over so that it communicates with the server via JSON. And um, so through that Perl API, the, you're, you're interacting with the elements that it provides. It's speaking behind their uh, JSON over and back with the Nerve Center server. And part of that is the ability to look up a node by its name, uh, by its ID. Um, we're we're looking at have you being able to further expand that, uh, you know, to, to to make it more, uh, you know, applicable. That you say, well, I have a particular IP address. Um, can you do you have a node with that IP address? Is like a common question. So we're looking at how to expand the API towards doing that. Uh, though one of the benefits in our uh, moving the the behind the scenes communication to JSON is that. Uh, we, we anticipate that this is going to, we'll be repeating this outside of Perl. Um, and so right now the Perl is front-ending the, the communication, uh, but in behind the scenes we're using a standard procedure. And so, you know, don't be surprised if it's Python next. It, you know, the same approach is, you know, made available as an API that you can approach them through Python or, you know, whatever the customer interest is. I mean, if, you, if, if, the, if there's a cry for Ruby, we can do that too, for instance or whatever. Uh, that's already what being about, done, actually. Um, so go ahead. Sorry, Greg. What about um, the, the REST API? Will the, the resources in the REST API um, be what is available in the Perl API? Yeah, there's this web interface here is using a REST approach. And so there is there is the demonstration of that here. Um, I guess you can't see it, but um, you know this web approach has been built using REST. And then as well, the back end of this is also using that same Perl API, the JSON element of it, to speak from its Node.js service in the background over into the NC server. It's, it's, it's communicating uh, via JSON over to the server and back. So there is both, yes, a REST API to communicate with uh, one layer of the service. There's the Perl API, which is a little farther back in terms of speaking to the service, but there is going to be both. And so there's plenty of means here for being able to talk to a server. Okay, anything else? So great. And I'll confirm to the audience the date this, uh, this release is going to be coming out. Right. Yeah, this is coming out at the end of the month here. So um, this, if I don't know what it will take to you know, for each of you to be able to find room to, to try out a new version of Nerve Center, but I'm, I'm very excited to be able to have you all try this out. And uh, um, it'll, uh, this is a, we're calling this Nerve Center 8. And um, so if, if you have a room for another uh, Linux image somewhere, we can make this available and you can be, uh, uh, you know, giving this a trial as well. I'd love to have you uh, give this a go. So this is not a compatible with 7.1? Well, it is very similar to 7.1. This uh, is entirely a growth of everything we've done before. So seven, okay, for those who are new here, so the Nerve Center releases have been up until recently 32-bit productions. A lot of them were implemented in a way that tied them into a common source code means uh, that was, um, that has been taken out um, in order to make them truly Linux um, um, animals. Uh, the there was a Windows emulation piece in there that's been done away with. So Nerve Center 7, which was last year, uh, was the you know version of Nerve Center still at 32-bit with a lot of 64-bit elements that had the older 
Microsoft isms removed. So 7.1, which came out at the beginning of this year, is um, the where, where's 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 my docs for that? The the 7.1 release is um, I guess I closed that. The the 7.1 release is the 64-bit equivalent of 7th. And now with this release 8, this is again 64-bit, and but this is with the web interface attached to it. So it is very compatible with 7.1 in, in what it looks like and what it does. Any other questions for Greg? And again, as Greg said, we would love for you to participate um, in 8.0 and see what what kind of benefits it brings to your organization. And in for the next month's customer council call, as Mike said, that we would have some demonstration from the customers. We would solicit. So it will be more interactive. Mike, great. I do have some feedback. I have some feedback on uh, user experience. Is this the right forum for that? Yes, yeah, sure. This is the good point. Yeah. Uh, when the, when the page first loaded, my eyes went uh, to the very first column, which is actions. Um, maybe move the actions to the very far right so that the first thing we see is the, the name and group. Oh, I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, awesome. I just, I, they, 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 the development team has done a tremendous <laughs> job with this, and uh, I, I owe them a lot of thanks. Uh, but yeah, I can rearrange the columns here. Problem um, solved. Yep, there's even, we're going to be expanding this a bit more, but the, you can even eliminate some of the columns if they're not of interest to you, and it just takes them off the screen, or you can add in you know, some others. But in time, we'll expand this a little bit more than this. Um, but yeah, there's many, many more attributes of a node than what are being shown here. And uh, uh, we couldn't load up the columns to be, you know, all however many there are. It's up to like 30 different attributes plus user-defined attributes. It just goes on and on. So uh, we started here with the set and said, okay, let's, let's provide this, but allow you to select which ones you want on the screen and as well to, you know, rearrange them however you want. Thank you for that feedback. Anything more uh, is welcome. Um, you can play with this live online if you want. Get a hold of uh, Renga, myself, or Mike, and uh, uh, we'll let you uh, toy and peruse around this. Any feedback you want to give us is fine. So, how far uh, the matter, how the matter if they have contact with Tony, they can talk to Tony too. That's right, yes. So they, you, you don't have to wait to install this in order to play with it. You are absolutely welcome to uh, to log in here and uh, look at it as well. Very good. And any direction you want to provide or thoughts on what you'd like to see next month, please send those in as well. So after this release, end of this month, then we have a series of release planned. Now uh, we published the release schedule earlier this year, which which we shared with you. If you want a copy, just drop a note to Greg. He will be more than happy to ask Tony or anyone of us. So it's a series of a series of um, releases this month, including uh, sorry this year, including documentation is coming. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, thank you very much for joining the call. I also want to thank um, Andy Miller, who's with Sam, uh, with Rich, who joined the call. Thanks, everyone. See you next month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.